This video is my contribution to the .NET MAUI Advent Calendar, or I'll the link in the description to see all the contributions. Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the MAUI App Accelerator. It's a way to build new MAUI apps faster and more easily. By default, if you want to create a new MAUI app, you use the templates that are provided. So we get the .NET MAUI app template there, select that. Next, we give it a name, we'll just give it any name for now. Then we come in here, we can choose whether we want to use .NET 7 or .NET 6. We hit create, and it goes away and builds our app. So here's the app we've got. Um, if you've ever built a Mario app before, you'll recognize this. We get a main page. Here it has um, some labels and a button, and there's some functionality behind the button. Just uh, keeps, keeps track of how many times you've clicked. Now, if, if that's what you want, that's brilliant. But there are lots of scenarios where you want more for your app. You may not want to have a button already wound up. You want to add, might want to add lots of pages when you start up. You might want to use uh, different navigation schemes. You might want to use different frameworks. Uh, and Maui App Accelerator is a way to help you do that. So the Maui App Accelerator is a Visual Studio extension just for Visual Studio for Windows. Um, you can get it from the marketplace or you can search inside Visual Studio. If you go to extensions and just search for it and then you can download and install it. So once you've installed the extension, when you go to create a new project, you'll get this new entry it's called Maui App Accelerator. And you'll see the nice little goat icon. The goat icon is there because when I was talking about this a lot early on, I abbreviated Maui App Accelerator to MAA or MA, which sounded a bit like a goat noise. So we've got a goat icon. Um, so we'll select that. Hit next. So as before, uh, we get to uh, give our project a name. I'm going to call this the Advent app because this is the um, Maui.net Advent, ad Advent calendar video. Um, we can choose where we want to put it and we hit create. And we get a very different window. So this is the Maui app accelerator wizard. Um, you can see a bunch of things going on. I'll draw your attention at the first of all to the lovely people at the bottom who are my GitHub sponsors who've helped make this possible. Um, if you'd like to join them and help me um, develop and evolve this um, tool further, that would be brilliant. Click the link there. There's links everywhere. Um, so what we see, so the first thing we get is we get to choose whether we want .NET 7 or .NET 6. And choose whichever is appropriate to you. Hit, um, so we can either click on the buttons down the side, we can click our next button, or we can shortcut everything through the list at the side. I'm going to click next. And here we see where we can choose whether we want to use the MVVM toolkit, and we get V models all wound or bound and wired up to our UI. Um, we can just use code behind, so we get like button clicks and direct references to things in the UI. Or we could not use AML at all, and we can use the C sharp markup. Choose whichever option is um, your preferred. I'm going to stick with the uh, MVVM toolkit first of all. And then we get to our next step, step three. Step three, we can choose how do we want the navigation in our app? Do we want a flyout menu on the side? So called a uh, hamburger menu. You know, for every page we add, we're going to get an entry in there. Um, we could leave it blank. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know, if you don't want lots of uh, navigation all wired up, use blank. You can do everything yourself. Um, or you can choose tabs. Uh, if we choose tabs, then we get a tab at the bottom of the screen for each page, and we can navigate that way. So choose whichever is most appropriate to your app. I'm going to stick with the flyout menu for now, and let's add some pages. So here we have a number of page options. So by default, we get a single blank page. You can put whatever you want in it. You can do with it whatever you want. You, know, you don't have to go in and start by deleting content that's already there. The, the blank page is really just for you to add things. There are a couple of other pop, other pages available as well. So we can use the list detail page. This is going to give us two pages for one. You know, if we add it, uh, you can see I can give it a name. Let's say we want this to be a list of customers. Give it customers, and when it creates the page, it's going to call it customers. Um, so it's going to give us a list. We can click on those, and it will take us to another page for the details. Um, if we wanted to do something where we had capture input, we could add a drawing page. 
Uh, if we went on a page with a web view on it, we're already built in, wired up, just ready for us to go because we knew we needed that. You just click that and we get that for us. If you want to see how this compares to the page that you get by default in the default templates, we could add a sample page. This is that, you know, an image, text, and a button to click. But because we're using the MVVM toolkit, you can see how to do that in an MVVM style. And there's also a page which adds um, examples for localization. If you need to use localization in your project, click this. It's going to add the resources file, and it's going to show you how you can wire that up inside your pages. And finally, we'll click Next again, and we get to Features. So if you want, you can use the Maui Community Toolkit in your app. You know, there are lots of reasons. There's lots of great functionality in there and lots of reasons why you might want to use that. Um, this has already been added for us because there are dependencies on it from some of the pages we've already added. See the licenses for the things we've added are here. And also we can add a test project. So we don't have to worry about wiring all that up. Then it will up for ourselves one click. And my generated solution is going to have two projects in it. One, which is going to be the test project, which is going to refer back to the app so we can do testing. Don't need to faff around with adding the NuGet packages, adding the references ourselves. It was just a single click. And when we're done, we can click create. So we can see just before we do that, we can see we, all the options we've chosen. Um, let's instead of calling this the main page, we can call this the home page. Okay, you, know, you noticed that when I got rid of it, we said the name can't be empty. Put that in. I imagine I wanted, so we've chosen that we want a flyout menu, so we can get a list down the left. And this order of the pages here is reflected of the list, of the order they're going to be in that list. If there were tabs, this would be the order they're going to be in the tabs. Let's say I want the sample page second. Let's just drag the sample page up. Oh, I've dragged it too far. Um, and now it's second to so our home page, sample, customers on this view oh, on the web view sorry okay now let's hit create see the app that gets gonna take a couple of seconds it's doing a lot more than a project would by default it might seem like a long time but i hope it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run and here we have our solution we have two projects we have our Advent app, that's our app, and we have advent app.tests, and this is our test project. Just give it a few seconds for Visual Studio to finish loading. Doing some background processes, that's all done lovely. And you can see in the task list, we've got a couple of to-do options already. And the first one, or the one at the bottom, is add some unit tests. So we've added the project, but we haven't got any tests. So if we wanted, we could use tests, and all the references are already set up. We could say advent app dot view models because it knows about our view models which are up here. And we could do something with them. Let's say we had some logic we wanted to test in our home view model. We could get at that from our tests and add some tests there. We won't do that now, but we've got some other to do actions. And these say to do update the default URL and hand out failed navigation let's go and have a look at these so by default when you create a new web page it's going to point to my lovely sponsorship page so you can become a lovely sponsor and i think you're lovely and you can help the further development of this extension that'd be great and the other thing it says to do handle failed navigation in an appropriate way so at the moment if you navigate within the extension uh, within the web view on the web view page and the navigation fails you get a a message displayed that said navigation failed that's probably not what you want in your app but i don't know what you want in your app so you can go and change that as is appropriate for your app so i said we had these view models over here and that's what we're looking at right now we have a view model for every page and we also have a base view model this is hooked up to our observable object um, which is part of the MVVM toolkit so we get all that lovely source generator magic let's come back to this sample where we can see we've got account, we've got a property, we've got a relay command. And these are all registered by default. Um, a program. Our global usings has some appropriate things for us, uh, appropriate to the oh, so references of using view models and our models and our services, a bunch of different things. And we have all our views here each of our individual pages. We have our customers and customer detail page. That was our list. 
We have our drawing page. We have a home page, which by default, completely empty, but you can see it's wired, wired up to that home view model. Home view model, which again is still empty because this is a completely blank page. It's for you to put whatever you want in it. You don't have to start by deleting things. You can start by writing the code you want to write. And there are other things in here as well. Um, so there's a sample data service, which is providing just some random data for a list detail page for the customers. See, we added some resources. You know, I didn't add the sample localization page. If we did, we'd see those there. You can, but this is everything you'd expect. You can see the colors and the styles, images. We've got an image for the um, each of the pages in that menu. But, uh, we've got some filters for some things which we need. And we can also, if we look here, we just look at the project file. See, we chose .NET 7 and everything is .NET 7. If we chose .NET 6, we'd be using .NET 6. We would also be using the appropriate versions of these packages. So the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, the .NET MAUI, version 3 is for .NET 7 and version 2 is for .NET 6. If we'd used chosen .NET 6, we would get the 2.0.0 version here. I know that and we're using the Community Toolkit. But, um, and eight, um, and these are some extra information that was generated, which the extension can do other things. So that's our app. Let's see it running. I'm going to run this on Windows. Just check that because sometimes checked. So let's see this running locally. Green. See, so this is our home page. This is the first page we chose, and it's completely blank as you'd expect. Um, and here are the options we've um, specified: the little icons, change if we want, if you want to. So here's the sample page, and it's like, well, works, but this is all using MVM sensor. And the command: open our list of customers. Here we go, just to randomly generate. Um, just but I can click on one, so this is four, get to our detail page, and back. Also, so we loaded that page, uh, and we can go back to our list. We can also go to other pages, so this is the drawing page. This is using the role from the toolkit, so we can draw an image, or let's say we wanted to we wanted save it, and it's an image, as you'd expect. Um, and also we can have our web view page, including that URL we specified initially. See it's like, yes, it's my sponsor page. Um, but also there's other functionality already there, so I can refresh. Did refresh, we can go to the GitHub page of extension, back button, and it back, forward, as you'd expect. And this page, um, Something you should definitely check out. Go over, give it a star, sponsor button if you're able to sponsor me, that would be appreciated. If you've got any thoughts, comments, suggestions, feedback, things you'd like to see added, come over, create an issue. See if we add improvements that way too. So that was it running on Windows. If we close it and let's see it running on an Android device. Here we go, we see our custom splash screen. Obviously you'll want to change anyway. <laughs> so we get our blank home screen. Get all the different pages we saw. Oh, so it's going to keep loading those. Obviously, that was it working on 
Windows and Android, but of course it works on um, iOS and macOS as well. Stop that now, but we can also have a look at what would have happened if we had opened a or chosen some different options. Right, I'm going to choose the same um, template again. Let's call this Advent 2. I'm going to get our wizard. So let's choose .NET 6 this time. And well, let's choose um, a C sharp markup option. Maybe we want to put everything in tabs. Uh, and we can still choose the same uh, page options as we had before. Why don't we just all of them? Actually, some of them we can add more than one. So we can add two samples, each name, localization option once. Same feature options. Create that. So, Advent 2, we got no test projects, we didn't choose one this time. We look at the project file, everything is using .NET 6 because that's what we said we wanted. And if we look here, we go, are we using older versions of the um, uh, libraries, ones that are appropriate to being .NET 6, and same for the markup library. See, if we look in our views page, our views now aren't. Um, XAML files, they are just C sharp files. So our main page is just a completely blank main page. It gets, still gets past the view models. We can put logic separate from our views if we want to do that. Um, and we can, if we look at things like the sample page, we've got our content, back layout, it adds the image, adds some labels, and a button which you can click on. Just like you would before. So if you want to see what I C sharp markup page looks like in comparison to one that's using a toolkit or is using code behind. Totally create those two different apps and see how they are uh, different or not. Run this on Windows again, just so you can see that it works. Build without issues. First off, we've got those same um, warnings we had before. Here we've got an extra one. Let's give feedback on how this is set up. Yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts on the one if you use C sharp markup. You know, the Maui markup library. Um, you know, does this make sense to you? Would you have learned things differently? How can we make it better? Love to get your feedback there. Loads up. So here's the app, um, and we chose tabs. Now on Windows, tabs are put at the top. So we'll look at all the different pages. Come to our sample. Uh, but this is all created from uh, C sharp. There wasn't any um, XAML used to create the UI. And you can explore the rest in the details as you would in the other app. So this is what's available. So hopefully this is a really strong starting point for you to help you um, create your apps with more than just a, a single page which you delete most of to get started. Hopefully it will allow you to experiment with some of what Mary has available. Maybe you're going to build some um, apps to explore what other people are talking about as part of the Advent Calendar project. Um, that'd be great. Go over, download the extension just so you can get started, and then come over to GitHub, give us a star, hit sponsor if you can, any amount, whether it's one off or recurring, it's all helpful and all appreciated. And give me some feedback. Go over to the issues. Uh, what would you like to see there? What needs changing? What can we improve? All your feedback would be greatly appreciated.